So if, if I may read off some of the ideas that Kip Thorne has had about how to artificially construct wormholes. So the first method involves quantum mechanics and the concept of quantum foam. And this is the thing we've been talking about. Now, to create a wormhole, these tiny wormholes would need to be enlarged and stabilized to be useful for travel. <laughs> but the exact method of doing this remains entirely theoretical. No shit, you think yeah. so? <laughs> so this, the, these tiny wormholes that are basically... Um, for the quantum entanglement of the particles mm -hmm. somehow enlarged. Man, playing with the topology of the Swiss cheese <laughs> yeah. would be so interesting. Even to get a hint, mm -hmm. that would be like top three, if not one of, the, maybe even number one question for me to ask. If I got a, a chance to ask- An omniscient being. Omniscient <laughs> being of like a question that I can get an answer to, mm -hmm. maybe with some visualization. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like the shape, the topology of the universe. Mm. Yeah. Like, but like, I need some details. Right. Unfortunately, <laughs> I'll get an answer that I right. can't possibly comprehend. <laughs> right. It's a hyperbolic manifold that's identified it's across. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. You, need, <laughs> you need to be able to ask a follow-up question. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that would be so interesting. Anyway, um, classical quantum strategy. The second approach combines classical physics with quantum effects. This method would, this method would require an advanced civilization to manipulate quantum gravity effects in ways we don't yet understand. There's a lot of... In ways we don't understand. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of... <laughs> and then there's exotic matter requirements. There's a lot of... But I can tell you, stabilization. I, I'm pretty sure all of them have in common the feature that they're saying, here's what I want my wormhole to look like first. So it's like saying, I want to build a building first. So they are... They have, they construct, there's an architecture of the space-time that they're after. And then they reverse the Einstein equations to say, what must matter and energy? Uh, what are the conditions that I impose on matter and energy to build this architecture? Which is unfortunately a very early step of figuring out Right, things. but it's important because it's how they realized, oh, wow, they have to have these negative energies. They have to violate certain... Uh, energy conditions that we often assume are true. And then you either say, oh, well, then all bets are off, they'll never exist. Or you uh, look a little harder and you say, well, I can violate that energy condition without it being that big a deal. <laughs> and um, and again, quantum mechanics often does violate those energy conditions. So do you think the studying of black holes and some of the topics we've been talking about will allow us to travel faster than the speed of light or travel close to the speed of light or do some kind of really innovative breakthroughs on the propulsion technology we use for traveling in space. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I assign in an advanced general relativity class the assignment of inventing a warp drive. Warp drive. <laughs> and it's kind of similar. So the idea is, uh, here's a place you want to get to <laughs> and can you contract the space-time between you with some... So the kind of some, something antithetical to dark energy, the opposite, and skip across and then push it back out again. <laughs> That's all, can, you can do that in the context of general relativity. Now, I, I can't find the energy that has these properties, but I also can't find dark energy. So, so we've already been confronted with something that we look at the space-time, the space-time is expanding ever faster. We say, what could possibly do that? We don't know what it is, but I can tell you about its pressure. I can tell you certain features about it. And I just call it dark energy, but I actually have no idea. It's just, that name's just a proxy for what this, it should be called invisible because it's not actually dark. If it's in this room, it's not hard to see through. It's not dark, it's, it's literally invisible. Um, so maybe that was a misnomer. But the point being, I still don't fundamentally know what it is. That's not so terrible. That's, that's the state of the world that we're actually in. So maybe warp drive is just kind of like a version of that. I, I don't know what form of matter can do that yet, but at least I can identify the features that are needed 